A video expose detailing alleged cruelty on Angora farms has cast a dark shadow over the South African mohair industry. Animal rights organization PETA says the investigation spanned 12 mohair farms and the abuse it uncovered was standard practice. The story has quickly gained international traction, leading to some leading clothing brands boycotting mohair products. But local Angora farmers are voicing up. They say everything is not as it seems in the video. We set out to meet a leading Angora farmer in the Karoo town of Prince Albert. Gay Van Hasselt has been farming with Angora goats for 30 years. The family business prides itself on the quality of its mohair as well as the stud animals. She says the video came as a complete shock. It's a noble industry run by noble people. People who care about their animals, who have a passion for their animals. And um, the, the misrepresentation on that video was completely and utterly nauseating. The part in the shearing shed or what happened there is unacceptable, but that was touted as general practice throughout the industry, which was absolutely, absolutely false. I never leave my shearing shed. I watch the sweep of every blade when, they, when my goats are being shorn. If you cut an animal of mine, I'm gonna stop you shearing immediately. And you only have to do that once to stop a guy from shearing for them to know that you're in business. I do not allow an animal of mine to be mutilated. I do not allow my animals to be brought in and put onto the floor in any old haphazard way. They get put on gently and they get shorn carefully. I'm absolutely sure that 99% of farmers would be meticulous about the way that their animals are being shorn. It doesn't make economic sense not to. Because Angora goats are bred for mohair, Van Hasselt explains trimming and shearing is essential for their well-being. If it doesn't get shaved every six months, it will be caught up in the bushes. It will not be able to see where it's going to find food. And so, you know, yes, the kids will scream, but you will see when once you get to about your second and third sharing, you took some footage of some adult use having, uh, we call it crutching, taking off their fringes and sharing around their tails. They actually love it. They sit back, you know, they relax. They know they're not going to be hurt. Industry body Mohair South Africa has echoed farmers who say the PETA report is grossly misleading and large portions are factually incorrect. Although it says it is investigating isolated issues raised in the expose. But PETA is not backing down and says the video that's been posted online only shows a fraction of the footage available. It says time is up for industries that mistreat animals for profit. The reality is, is that whenever PETA affiliates do investigations like this, wherever animals are being exploited for profit, we always find them being mistreated. You know, not just mohair, but with the wool industry in general, with the down feather industry, leather, fur, across the board. And of course, the industry are going to try and defend themselves. They want to see a continuation, but it's not just some random, a few bad apples. This is, we believe, the standard mistreatment of animals throughout the fashion industry. In the meantime, farmers say it's the animals themselves that will suffer if large-scale boycotting continues amid the worst drought in living memory. We've been feeding like 15,000 rands worth of feed a day to keep our stock alive. We do our sums based on what income we're going to get back on our mohair. If the mohair industry collapses, our goats cannot be fed. Our animals cannot be fed. There are farmers that have bankrupted themselves feeding their animals and trying to prevent them from dying of starvation. The NSPCA's Farm Animal Protection Unit has confirmed to News24 that PETA has sent them all its video files and an investigation into the 12 farms is underway. It also confirmed that it will be meeting with Mohair South Africa to exchange information and hold offending farmers to account. In the meantime, Van Hasselt says they are trying to look for a silver lining. We need to bring to book people who do not look after their animals well. And there's got to be traceability in terms of the buyers, 
where the, the mohair is coming from and whether those farmers do apply to sustainable and ethical farming practices. We would like to take the positives of what's come out of this very bad negative.